Another Henry is forever associated with Canterbury Cathedral and the story of Thomas Becket. His murder in the 12th century sparked pilgrimages from all over Europe. Becket has had so much mythology put around him that he has been represented as the gentle spiritual integrity against the brute force of the state. But in practice, Thomas Becket was a pain in the neck and he made England unlivable in. The church and the state had sort of uh, cooperated together and put aside its principles just so that they could together keep the peasants down for all through the feudal system. And suddenly um, they came into a headlong collision over something quite stupid like uh, whether or not the church or the king had jurisdiction over the mem people who worked for the church. Uh, when he was murdered, a lot of the people in Canterbury, the um, the monks of Canterbury regarded him as being a king's clerk who had got high office by the favour of the king and had simply had disobeyed the king and had got what was coming to him in the form of 12th century justice. They was bumped off and um, everything was lost at that moment. The thing which saved the day for Thomas was not his holiness, it was the fact that underneath his robes he was wearing a hair shirt and drawers to mortify the flesh and his hair shirt and drawers were so De thickly infested with lice and fleas that, as one observer put it, it was like looking at the top of a boiling cauldron as they trooped away from the cooling body. And this revolting revelation showed the people of the 12th century that he was utterly holy. And from that moment on, he had won. After his death, he had won his battle with the king. Thomas Becket grew more famous in death than he'd ever been in life. Pilgrims flocked to his shrine in Canterbury, but getting there wasn't always easy. Well, life in the 14th century was a very dangerous business, and certainly if you wanted to set out to walk from London to uh, Canterbury on your own, your chances of getting much beyond uh, Blackheath or Shooter's Hill were extremely unlikely. And uh, for this reason, um, people used to travel in larger numbers, but there were three main inns within the city, uh, and a thriving industry uh, grew up. Uh, connected with the, uh, the pilgrimage, um, not only selling souvenirs, uh, but also accommodating and uh, I, I suspect on some occasions not giving extraordinarily good value of money uh, to the pilgrims. These were probably the earliest package tours of all time. The oldest river crossing in England for road traffic is still in use. It has a ducking stool with a nasty heritage all of its own. It was something to try and keep traders on the straight and narrow. Remember, people could neither read nor write, and it was a very common practice for traders to give what was called short measure. You cheated everybody and made a lot of extra profit. And that was fine until you were discovered. Once you were rumbled, then you were brought down, and it was the public humiliation. The main road from London to Dover was nearby. People would obviously tell their neighbours that the local butcher or baker was a bit of a charlatan and he was ducked in a river, which was an open sewer. When it came to witchcraft, of course, they used to duck them trial by error, trial by uh, water or fire. They had these three duckings. If they survived, well, they'd use witchcraft and they were taken away and burnt at the stake because the fire element came. And if they drowned? They drowned. It was the will of the Lord, but they were buried in holy ground. It's the oldest river crossing place in England to take road traffic. This bridge itself um, has been extended. The section on this side is about two centuries old. The lower portion we're just going to go under in a moment is six centuries uh, old. And before that, there was a wooden bridge across the stream here. This bridge would have been used by the colorful characters that were immortalized in Chaucer's Canterbury Tales. The Chaucer Museum gives an overview of what life was like for the pilgrims. We've reconstructed the road between uh, London and Canterbury as we believe it was in the late 14th century, uh, the time of uh, Chaucer's uh, Canterbury Tales, and our visitors move along that route uh, between uh, the Tabard Inn in London and uh, the shrine of Thomas Becket in, uh, in Canterbury Cathedral. The exhibit reveals what it would have been like for Chaucer's band of travellers to make the difficult trek. Tell me please to save my life Five of Chaucer's tales are recreated here, including the bawdy wife of Bath and other rude and carousing characters. Chaucer died before completing his Canterbury Tales and is remembered as one of England's greatest poets. For more information, visit our website on topoftheworld.net.